now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ladies and gentlemen, out to the other coast of the United States we go to join the lovely Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, Larry. Hello, Alex. Uh, now, the guy, we, the only guy we just do audio with. That's why you see a constant thing on your screen that says Larry Bubbles Brown with his ugly mug on it uh, because he has uh, still his flip phone. Uh, yes, and... Uh... So you just put up, it's like the courtroom, you put up an artist rendering. <laughs> yes, right. Well, Remember I'll those and then it was artist rendering. And they... Right. I, I'll tell you something, though. What I really uh, kind of enjoyed uh, is uh, uh, I was uh, go, trying to get onto the phone company. To, I just wanted to find out about my phone charges. There's a charge there that says shared charge or something. I don't understand what it is. And, this of, is of course, I don't want to call them because I'll be on hold forever. So I go to their chat, and that is absolutely useless. It, take, it was taking me a half hour to get a simple answer. All I wanted to know was, what is the shared plan? It says it says shared plan, and then it says what I'm, my regular plan is paying. And I don't know what the shared plan is, and I it doesn't make any sense to me. So you should be glad you have you have the same phone you've had for the last what twenty years, <laughs> because you don't have to go through this crap. Yes, trying to get an answer out of any company these days is uh, impossible. Like you said, a half an hour to get a simple answer. Yeah, just a simple answer. All I want to know is, and then all of a sudden they say, well, you, you know, you bought your phone in blah, blah, blah. And I, I could swear this phone is two years old, that I didn't buy it on that day. Uh, but maybe I did. You know, I could be wrong. You know, but anyway, I'm, I'm fed up. <laughs> having to deal with these things yeah. life is is really you know life is difficult these days nothing is nothing is easy no you know you yeah. know if something's wrong on your electric bill it's going to take you the rest of the day to solve the problem absolutely that's why uh nothing gets done and with all this technology this stuff is supposed to be a snap and it's getting worse yeah and don't give me the excuse your people are working from home they're working from home, they probably are in a much more decent situation than if they were at the office, okay? So don't give it to me, well, they're working from home, so everything's fucking up. What do you mean? It, it shouldn't, you know. So. And then I take my, my, my uh, what I call my nice pill. I have a, a nice pill. It's a thing I take for my neuropathy, and somehow Marjorie says, I'm so nice after I take it. All day long, I'm just very pleasant, you know. But I'm loopy. I bump into walls. I just ta started talking to you, and then I hung up on you because I thought that it was a little red button. So I said, that must mean record. I mean, that's how loopy I am right now. So. Well, stay out of the car. Mm. Well, I'm drinking coffee now. Oh, listen, driving a car. I haven't driven a car in three years. Boy, that would be uh, hard for me, and uh, it would be impossible to own a car in New York City, I would imagine. Uh, yeah, yeah, but I haven't, I haven't driven a car in three years, and I wonder if I still can drive. Ask like a bicycle, you could drive. You really, you think so? Yeah. Oh, boy. Uh, you know, I just, I think about getting, you know, and plus the fact that in the three years that I haven't driven a car, they have changed. They're all like electronic, and they've you know they they got all this stuff in there, and you just push a button to change gears. And you know, I don't, you know, I'd have to relearn how to drive. Uh, I somebody loaned me a uh, Mercedes the last year, and it was like literally, I had to sit in there fifteen minutes to learn how to start the thing, and the it was really overpowering the electronics and. 
stuff you have to learn. Yeah, but it, but but was it easy enough for you once you got going? It was uh, it was okay. once I got going. Yeah, but it had things like if the radio is you hit a screen and it's uh, it, there's certain things that's it's so technological it makes it harder to do rather than if you want to adjust the seat. Rather than just hit a little lever, you have to hit the screen and then find out where the seat is, and it's just it really takes five minutes. And it's just it was irritating. Yeah, well, I mean, what about the old days where you just had a car that had a key and you turned it and it started? Yeah, no key. You put uh, you have a fob which uh, you always lose, and you press a button. If you got the fob, you just press a button to start the car. Yeah, they're not good. They're over engineered and. Uh, I was reading Consumers Report how the uh, all the new cars they uh, they really don't like all the uh, advanced electronics on them. They're very cumbersome. Well, you've got a very mecha- at its base. You've got a very mechanical machine that's all gears and rods and blah blah blah. That none of that changes. So when you add into it the electronics, you really can screw things up. I mean, it's much simpler when all you had to do was get in the car, put a key in there, start it. Okay, yeah. and then put it into gear, you know, and and get going. That was it, you know. I like the simplicity of that. When I was a kid, you know, we I, I learned on a stick shift. I don't know about you. I never got to drive a stick shift in my life, so no, I I, I should have that skill, but I don't. Yeah, no, I I learned on a stick shift, and um, I mean, naturally, when automatic came along. It was easy peasy, you know. I, it was a no brainer, okay. Um, but you had to learn how to use the clutch and how to, you know. And I got to tell you, I almost prefer that uh, because you had more control over the car, you know. Then that's I, what I hear. Although I heard if, uh, like, if you're driving a stick shift up a steep hill in San Francisco, that took some skill. Oh, that I learned that skill, though, because I was born and raised in San Francisco. I could get to the top of the steepest hill in San Francisco and literally not go back an inch when I finally Yeah, I'm looked. always afraid when you you got somebody in front of you and they start to roll back. Well, you've got, the, you've got your foot on the pedal, and then what you do with your other foot yeah, well, then then you uh, um, put your what did we what did I do? You put your uh, um, foot on the clutch in, in order to make it. Uh, well, no, you let, let's see, you stopped. You're in gear, but you stopped. Okay, um, so then you you let out the clutch as you pu- push on the gas. That's what you used to do. You let out the clutch as you push on the gas. And if you do it in an equal amount, you don't roll back. You just okay. go forward. But if you know, if you were to just do the clutch, you'd go back. If you <laughs> you have to put the gas on in an equal amount, and it after a while you learn how to do that. You know. Now that I think about it, if I could do that, I must still be able to drive a car. <laughs> You should run a car someday and drive around Manhattan. Yeah, I don't think I... I wonder if I could do a clutch these days. I probably could. You know, I mean, I, I was so enamored of it. I mean, once I got to uh, automatic shifts, uh, it was uh, it was a completely different experience for me. Well, it was a, uh, that's a generational thing I think is gone now. Is when I was growing up, getting a car was a right to manhood. And now uh, I think uh, younger people today don't even want a car. They don't? No, they just use Uber. and. Really? Yeah, yeah they don't buy cars, young kids, no. Really? I thought young kids would want a car just like, you know, because it, it, it means, as you say, what it meant to us was liberation. Yeah, you know, we had a car. We could go somewhere. We could. If we were still living at home. Hey, mom, dad, I'm going out. You got in the car and you went. It was also a rolling motel room. <laughs> that too. That too. I always made sure I had enough room in the back seat. I always made sure of that. <laughs> I mean, the first the first time I ever had sex was in the back of a 1939 Pontiac Torpedo, which I owned. The Torpedo. <laughs> 
you know do you know the Pontiac torpedo? I've heard of it, yeah. It was a great great car. I mean it had great looks. Although I painted it pink. I don't know why. I just pink. Wow. I, well it needed a paint job, so I got spray painted it. I I don't think I did it pink. I think the guy I bought it from did it see here's what happened. I bought this car from a friend of mine who used to get laid a lot. And I figured if he got laid a lot, if I had a car, I would get laid a lot if I, if I bought his car, that it had this magic thing about it. So I bought it, and eventually uh, that was the car I first had sex in. And um, uh, my first sexual experience was in the back seat of a 1939 Pontiac Torpedo painted pink. <laughs> On the right in back, where you know where the uh, the uh, in, San, in New York, in Marin County the uh, Civic Center is. Sure. Well, in those days, there was a lot of woods right in back of it. There was nothing there. Okay. And I parked there, and we started having sex. And quite frankly, I don't know whether I put it in or not. I don't know whether I hit a crease in her leg or whatever. It was just so horrible, such a horrible experience. So I said. Can we do this again at my place on Monday? <laughs> so she said, sure. I it'll be better. <laughs> she said, sure, when we went to my place and did it on Monday. So I don't know if my first sexual experience was that. All right? So <laughs> I'm trying to figure it out. Uh, you know, but it's, it, 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 that, that was my first sexual uh, experience in the backseat of a Pontiac Torpedo. And it was commemorated by Frank Lloyd Wright building his last building on that. It, that's correct. That's absolutely correct. Um, and uh, so I, you know, it was, it was, uh, it was uh, I thought it was an interesting experience. I, I had a good time. Uh, and uh, that was the beginning of my sexual career. Uh, wow. But, you know, when you have your, did you ever remember this one? You have, how, when did you have your first sexual experience? I was like twenty one. It was old. Oh, I was eight. I was nineteen. I was nineteen. Um, I think was that common back then. The in those days, I think most people lost their virginity somewhere around eighteen, nineteen. Women would hold on to theirs like it was something precious. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, I'm going to remain a virgin till I'm married. You know, no guy wants to marry a woman who isn't a virgin. <laughs> really? Remember that? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sorry, I do. <laughs> you know, I really do. Um, I want to know that she has experience, and I'm not teaching her anything. You know, so um, uh, it, it, it's uh, yeah. So that's my that's my story on that. Um, I gotta but, look up the thirty nine torpedo. It sounds like a very cool. Yeah, car. But what was your first? What was your first experience? Uh, believe it or not, it was the Mustang Ranch. <laughs> no, no. Yes, yes. Really? Uh huh. Is that where you got the phrase? Are you open? I have cash. Yeah, kind of came from that. <laughs> I'd seen. Uh, let's see, I was twenty one. I saw the. Uh, I saw there was an article about it on the uh, on Cron here at the. Uh, mm -hmm. So I thought I, I was, next time I went up to Reno, I went out there and tried it, and it was, come on, my God, it was so cheap. It was uh, it was fifteen dollars. Fifteen bucks. Nineteen seventy three. Was that for a full sexual experience or just a blow yeah. job or? Uh huh. Yeah. Okay, and and so then let's. Okay, what was your first non professional <laughs> experience? <laughs> <laughs> that came at 23 a uh, girl i met uh, here in san francisco and oh, so so after you went to the mustang ranch did you go back to the mustang ranch again because there's this Not period of time there no. between 21 and 23 i think i went back out there it was like uh, 10 years later with some friends from ohio came out here so we all went, took them up there and i went over there once and i just found it such a sterile experience it was you know, kind of sterile. The girls were nice. The uh, girls, they could be the nicest in the world, you know, but uh, they're faking orgasms, so they're probably faking liking me, too. Yeah. You know, so I never felt it was a genuine experience, and I was the kind of guy I wanted to conquer, okay? So the idea that I walk in, I pay a woman X number of dollars, and then she does whatever she does with me, 
just never appealed to me. It's not that appealing, but I see. I think it's to have it legal like that and regulated versus the. Uh, some woman getting killed on the street or yeah. it's, it's such a much better way to do it. Yeah. Well, Larry, we've run out of time once again. Just when we were rolling on hookers. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, another, another portion with Larry Bubbles Brown, not being able to see his ugly mug on zoom. <laughs> Thanks Larry. We'll talk to you next week. You got it. Okay. Bye. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And our good friend Larry Bubbles Brown. We love Larry, don't we? Everybody loves Larry. How can you not love Larry? He just, yeah, I don't know anybody in the world who has a bad thing to say about Larry Bubbles Brown. I got a whole wire sticking out here. It's bothering me. Oh, well, what the hell? Anyway, hi, how are you? What's happening? What's happening tonight? Uh, I, I hope that we are uh, going to be uh, uh, doing this program uh, and not uh, going out of sync very much. I'm, I Basically because yesterday I went and I bought, I have, I have two Brios, uh, uh, Logitech Brios. These are cameras. They're 4K cameras. That's what, why I look so gorgeous right now. <laughs> gorgeous. Anyway, so I got two of them, and I have one for a machine over here and one for this machine, and then I suddenly realized that I was uh, running the same video camera on my uh, switcher that I was on Zoom, and that that was causing somewhat of a lag, okay? So, so I, uh, I brought the other camera over here and worked pretty well the last couple of nights. Last night especially, just perfect, you know, never went out of sync but we did go out of sync a little bit in the show as I went back and looked at it, but I don't think that has anything to do with the camera. So I decided, well, I still need a camera for over here. So last night at 200 bucks, I went out and ordered a new camera for this machine. So I have two of them on this machine, hey, you know. Uh, and, and this thing just keeps costing me money, and I don't know why I do it. <laughs> I mean, I'm not making any profit off of this thing. Come on, you know? Anyway, uh, I think it's time for me to uh, bring in some of the people here um, for, for um, our, uh, uh, our program tonight, for our panel, as it were. And uh, let me see here. We still, uh, uh, do we have, uh, who we got there? Well, we got, we got Robert Natali. Good to see you tonight, Robert. Alex. How are you doing? Hello. Good. And uh, also, uh, let me see here. There's uh, there's uh, uh, Trucker Steve and his sidekick, Rocky, who probably isn't having anything to do with him now because he goes, you know, I went out on the road with you for so many days. I don't have to see you now, right? He's, got, he's upstairs with mom. He's got an attitude. And uh, Dan Meyer is here, ladies and gentlemen. Well, Good evening. No re relation to Phil, yeah. and he's happy to. Not that I know of. I mean, could be, that. maybe. But, yeah. It could be. And, yeah. of course, uh, Alan is there, and the lovely and attractive, and still, you still snowed in there, Charlie, or was it nicer today? It was Texas? nicer today. Sun came out. Snow is actually starting to melt. It got up to 40 degrees, so, mm. hey. Okay, so now all that First snow. First time in a week. Now all that freezing. snow melts and is causing the the problem of flooding and stuff, right? You know what I saw online uh, today? Well, Probably will. Yeah. What we what, 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 saw online today? Some people are getting ten thousand dollar electric bills from Texas. Yeah, I've heard that. I can't believe that. Wait a minute. Jeez. Ten thousand dollar electric bills from Texas? Yeah. What for? I, I, I saw the story online. I can yeah, see if I can find it. <laughs> well, it, it's got to be high in demand, and since there's such a demand for electricity now, they're jacking up the price some places. But, but not to ten thousand dollars for crying out loud. That's what the article said. Let's see, aren't there laws in the state of Texas about how much these uh, facilities there can charge? Be. Huh? Is well, it... Texas is unregulated. 
<laughs> I'll say. Yeah, 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 exactly. Exactly. Texas has their own power grid. Yeah, they, they, they separate it from the I don't know if you can see the article. Yeah, well, I can't see yeah. it. We can't see it, but I, I, you know, I believe you. I believe yeah, you. I read the same article. I, I was stunned. Yeah, you haven't gotten a ten thousand dollar electric bill yet. No, my electric bill was sixty bucks last night. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is uh, NBCnews.com. Yeah, on, on their website. Yeah. Yep, I read it. Yeah. Yeah, I see it too. Between that and your senators, geez, Almighty! Oh, oh goodness! Right, Robert. Ted but Cruz. I went. Hey, uh, yeah, I owe Ted Cruz an apology. Do you really? Oh. Yeah, back back when he was running for president, I told people all he cares about is Texas. I was wrong. <laughs> he doesn't even care about Texas. No, he doesn't even care about Texas. Right? No, I was yeah. wrong. Yeah, no, he doesn't even care about Texas. I, mean, I got to put I got to um, put my my uh, thing back here. I I was sitting up too high here. Hold on a second, folks. Um, just uh, oh, there we go. Okay. Anyway. Nah, I don't like that either. I'll go back to it. What's the matter? What? Excuse me, I gotta be comfortable. Do you mind? Okay. Do you mind? If I'm okay, just... that's fine. What I was gonna say about Ted Cruz was, I mean, what kind of half a man is he? With with uh, how can his wife even look at him after he's like, yeah, like his Trump calls his wife ugly, and he he'll screw his whole career for Trump. His what whole you, career will go down the tubes for him. What do you expect she's, from a woman named Heidi? Yeah, she's a piece of work, too. Yeah. Well, you okay. know. Yeah, sure. I, yeah, I, I don't really see, know much about Here's it. where the big mistake was, okay, with, with Cruz. Okay, I understand. He your, was born. Your kids don't, <laughs> their kids don't like freezing in the house, okay? So you want to send the kids to Cancun to get... Give them a little respite from this horrible weather that you have in Texas. I understand that. So you send them to Cancun, but you yeah. don't go with them. That's yeah. the difference here. I can understand wanting to send the kids away, get them out of harm's way, whatever. But if you're the senator from that state, you don't go to Cancun while right. all hell is <laughs> breaking loose back in your home state. Not that there's anything he can do about it. But he can be there for support, right? And it just looks terrible. God. I mean, well, Beto was bringing meals to a million Texans. Was he really? During the pre. Yeah. And he, yeah. Didn't, and he wasn't even a so senator. Cruz could have done something like that. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot of things that Cruz could have done, but he didn't do any of it. So, you know. Could have killed himself and saved the uh, country a lot of grief. A lot of grief, yeah. Uh, hello there, Kevin, and hello to Josh. Um, Hi, Alex. How you guys uh, doing? Good. Getting yeah. ready to go to Cancun. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I figured it's a great place to go. Yeah. And, and when the weather's like it is, you know, come on. Hell yeah. If I was Charlie, I'd be on a plane. Yeah. <laughs> I can't even get out of my driveway. <laughs> well, I'll call Ted Cruz. He'll help you. You still have the Houston police come escort you to the plane. I think <laughs> I think Ted Cruz should buy tickets to Cancun to any Texan who wants to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, it's just oh, and and what was worse, he not only went to Cancun, but he sent out a text to all his friends to join him there, and he would pay for their stay in Cancun. And he abandoned his dog. <laughs> yeah, he left his dog in the cold. Yes, the dog. You know what the dog's name is? Snowflake. Snowflake. <laughs> <laughs> what a fucking This idiot. story just keeps giving, it just keeps giving and giving and giving. And didn't his wife call them and say that it was really cold at home? Yeah. His wife texted him or something and said something like, oh, it's really cold at home or some shit. Well, what I love was his thing that he, he went with them all the way to Cancun, but then he was going to turn around and come back because. Yeah, after right. All, yeah, right. Come mm. on. He wasn't planning on coming back. He just heard about the, you know, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the blowout back home <laughs> over his leaving. Some pretty big suitcases. With him. <laughs> it's Jimmy just. Jimmy Kimmel yeah. showed a picture of him on the aircraft and said, oh, snake on a plane. 
<laughs> I think I saw a meme to that effect. Yeah. 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 Uh, I mean, uh, he uh, and then seeing him in his uh, his his T-shirt tucked in. Oh my God, the T-shirt <laughs> tucked in, um, and um, him uh, walking around in his flip flops or whatever throughout the airport, trying to get yeah. a plane back home. Yeah, you know, just amazing. Just amazing. He had the flat coach. He couldn't get upgraded the yeah. first time. And if you weren't planning on staying down there, why the suitcase? Yeah, right. You know, I mean, it just. Yeah. But the trouble is, he does isn't up for election for about two years. For about well, three years, but it's four years. Hence, is the election. But let's say give him four give him, years. Yeah. Uh, by that time, Texans are going to forget. That's what the problem is. Yeah. You know, they're just going to forget what the hell went on. Yep. You know, so, I mean, yeah. who knows? Who knows what, what what's going to what's going to happen with Ted Cruz? Of course, back here in, in, in New York, uh, we got a governor in a lot of trouble. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, 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 he's got he today. He went on the air, He went on his little podcast, little podcast thing lasted two hours. And and he constantly in he was constantly in those two hours just talking continually about the situation. He even had his doctor, Doctor Zucker, explain what went on to try and excuse his behavior. And he was just trying to do so much of a mea culpa that you began to think maybe he is guilty of something. Mm. You know, it was just like he was over. You know how you can over talk it. You know. You can just say, hey, look, I, I, we made it some mistakes back then, blah, 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 blah. But we got them corrected now, and believe it, you know, I, I really do care about everybody, and we didn't mean to lie. There were there were reasons why. Maybe have Dr. Zucker explain. He, Dr. Zucker went into a half-hour explanation on how the hospitals were full, and we had to let the people go and go back to the nursing homes. But if the, and, and after it's all over, I'm going... Well, I didn't think this guy was that terribly guilty, but now I've kind of changed my mind, you know, because he's just spinning it yeah. so badly. Did, that, did you yeah, hear any of it, Robert? I'm nervous, you know. Because <laughs> you're in New Jersey. Did you hear any of it? No, oh, I actually okay. didn't. Yeah. And so to, to make up for it, he's allowing the restaurant to have 35% uh, uh, occupancy. Yeah. And his excuse on that one is almost as bad as Cruz's is about why he went to Cancun. He said, the reason that we're going to go to 35% is because it's 35% in New Jersey, and we don't want people leaving New York to go to New Jersey for dinner. Mm. Mm. Does that make sense at all? <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know about you. I live, again, they're back to normal. I live in Manhattan. I don't think I'm going to New Jersey simply because they can fit 10 more people in. You know? I just don't think I'm going for that reason. Maybe because there's some really good Italian food over there, but that's about it. You know? That's about it. Yeah. Uh, but uh, we, we have a lot of bad behavior on the parts of people. What do you think about this bad behavior, Josh? Come on. Who's bad behavior? Cuomo's? <laughs> Cuomo's and uh, and and uh, uh, Ted Cruz, you know. I mean, I, the Texas thing, you know, with Cruz is not really all that unexpected. I no. mean, I think Cruz is a, you know, Cruz is a selfish guy. He's not a good guy. I mean, that's pretty clear. The Texas thing is a little bizarre. I mean, I understand, you know, their power grid situation and. You know, they lost power and a lot of that kind of stuff. I mean, it, it's just, I don't know. People here, I mean, I'm not saying I don't have, like, a empathy for them or whatever, but mm -hmm. people here are like, God damn, it's like that here for six months out of the year. I mean, what the fuck's going on? I mean, I just can't believe they can't survive because the weather got well, bad. Well, but, like, but you see, you got to realize that where, where you live, where you live, uh, it's Ohio, right? Am I right? right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in Ohio, you're used to that. You know, you're used to that kind of weather. We're used to it here. I mean, the minute a couple of little flakes start yeah, falling on the ground, I hear the, the snow plows outside scraping yep. the concrete to a fairly right. well. 
Ain't yeah. no snow plows in Texas. Right. No snow plows in Texas. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and and you are just and not I'm ready for that bison. kind of weather. You were saying last night you don't even own a pair of galoshes, so you couldn't go no, out. No, and... I couldn't get to my car. That's for right. Two days. Yeah. Just out in the parking lot. Right. So you know, I mean, it's just a perfect example of of uh, of the difference. So so for you, Josh, when it snows, you're ready for it. You know, you've got the scraper for the windshield. And you've got, uh, you know, whatever you need Oops. to take care of it. But uh, it, that, guys that in Texas. That doesn't explain the electrical grid situation, though. Oh, well, no, but no, that was that, I get it that they're not prepared for bad weather. Mm -hmm. But, you know, a couple of accidents on the road and so forth, I get that, too. Yeah. But the electrical grid situation is an abomination, it mm -hmm. seems. They, they bit their own. They stepped on their own weenies doing that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that's their own fault for isolating themselves. Yeah. Well, there was that's been going on for years. No, but they're you know what they're blaming yep. it on, what they're brain, bl blaming it on. Some of these Republicans in Texas. Yeah. Tell me if I'm wrong about this, Charlie. They're blaming it on, um, uh, what do you call it? Green power. Yeah, yeah they're, they're blaming it on frozen the windmills because their windmills oh. froze up. Well, the reason their windmills froze up is because they bought cheap fucking windmills. Right. right. Yeah. Well, I mean, you you could cross I ninety uh, through northern Illinois and Wisconsin mm -hmm. and the deserted areas on the plains of southern Minnesota and those places, and they're chock full of windmills. And I'm pretty sure it gets cold there for more oh, than like yeah. you know, yeah. fifteen yeah. minutes right, at a time. Exactly. So, they have windmills so. in Antarctica. Well, yeah. what, isn't, yeah. there, isn't, there, isn't there something about that Texas didn't become part of a federal plan? Right. They refused to. They withdrew yeah. from it and completely separated our grid from the national grid. So they, they didn't build it. on that railroad commission, right? People yeah. down here. So they didn't what build the it. a railroad commission that they don't yeah. have running the grid for. But they didn't. What, they ha what happened is they didn't build it to spec, right? It, that's what the problem right. was. They, yeah. they don't have the, the insulation and stuff like you have and the, and the de-icing methods that you have up north. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They've, they, that's been that way for years. The plants are not insulated. The, even the plants that that I used to deal with down there mm -hmm. from my company, they would overbuild and insulate things. And the other plants around them did not. They, well, why aren't they doing that? You know, even even if the, you know, oh, oh, it's Texas. They don't do that shit down there. Why? They don't insulate pipes. Shit that's how we lose water. All the pipes burst because... It, and they, oh, it's Texas. We don't freeze in Texas. Texas does a lot of shit that they don't need to do, and they don't do it unless something happens, and then they'll do it. It's a well, reactive state. You know, it also, there is no belief in, in that part of the world in global warming. Nope. Now, no, they're, what in, you're they're seeing, in a fossil world. It, it, you yeah. know, we've seen wildfires in California. We've seen this happening in Texas. We've seen other things happening elsewhere. It's all part of global warming when are they going to get the message that this is global warming you know? Got, you know i was in i was in the chemical business we don't believe in that science i was in the chemical storage <laughs> business and whenever i couldn't store something in california mm -hmm. send it to texas yeah okay. absolutely <laughs> that's what we did absolutely our spec i had, I had, a, I, I had limits on certain chemicals that i could store in california i would get to that point there was some chemicals that i would i would have to cross dock and cross dock meant they come in they sat on a dock for 24 hours and they had to be gone and some of it was so toxic that if it didn't leave in 24 hours they had people knocking on my door saying get that shit out of here or you're going to jail and I had stuff that would come from Henderson, Nevada, and had to go to Texas before it came to me because I had to ship it over to China. So in order for it to not stay in my place, if I couldn't meet a ship at the right time, it had to go to Texas oh, to sit there and then go come to me and then go to China. Yes. Uh, uh, They'll just take it. Yeah, stick it in the backyard. We'll put it there. You know that that governor. Mr. Larkin. Yeah, I, mean, I know people are going to be offended by John it. John Larkin has something to say, folks. That that governor of Texas was going on about, you know, uh, look look what happened if we had the Green New Deal, blah blah blah. You know, <laughs> Den Denver and Norway get almost all of their um, 
energy from solar and wind. And yep. it's a lot fucking colder up there than it is in uh, Texas. Well, that's because they buy the windmills that are, that are lubricated right. or something or don't freeze yeah. up. Okay. Yeah, they're smart. They they fucking know it's cold, so they figure it out and build it the right way. I mean, when you go they're out and green. buy your windmills from the cheapest bidder, I think you're going to run into trouble. You know? Yeah. 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 But I mean, it is it is a different situation in Texas. They're probably not going to see this problem for another five years. Maybe it won't happen yeah. again for another ten. This is a freak. Yes, Alan. So if it never gets cold <laughs> enough to get a heater in in a, in a state. Mm -hmm. Let's just say, for instance, mm -hmm. uh, it never got cold enough to have a heater in your house. Right. And mm -hmm. one year out of 100, you have a cold snap like this. Everything's going to freeze up because you're not prepared. And it's hard to be prepared when you don't know when it's going to happen. So the, the windmills in real cold areas have heaters that wrap around the, yeah. the outside of it and around everything. It's an electrical yeah. heater. That, that warms up and heats up to keep the equipment going. In Texas, they probably didn't have that because who would have known this well, was going to happen? They don't need that. Yeah. Well, but don't you, don't you, when you do stuff like this, don't you get uh, prepare for any eventuality? No. You know, you, you should. <laughs> you know, you I mean, sure? I to know. <laughs> what, what are you saying, Brian? We live, we live in California, mm -hmm. we have earthquakes. Yes. How often is a big one that's going to bring something down? But we prepare like crazy. Well, Absolutely. Uh, buildings are built to specifications that are anti, uh, uh, you know. Se the seismic, yeah, seismic. Se yeah. Seismic refitting and whatever, you know. My, my new factory, we just anchored everything down. And maybe mm. the big one never happened, but we Well, I remember when we when we um, uh, had the big uh, Loma Prieta quake back in, what was it, 69, something like that? 89. 89. 89. 89. 89. 69. I can't I was two years old. Oh, shut up. Loma yeah. Prieta. <laughs> Loma Prieta quake. Uh, uh, everybody was talking about the fact that they were going in, like in the marina, because it was they were old buildings and they hadn't been made to deal with earthquakes, you know. So what they did is they retrofitted it by building rolling foundations. And what these were were foundations that if there was an earthquake, they would roll. There was some sway because the problem is if you've got something anchored to the ground and then there's an earthquake and then it starts shaking, it just shakes it till it falls down. But if you have a rolling foundation, it just moves back and forth. And so they learned that. And so now if you had another <laughs> earthquake like we had in 1969, 1989, um, you wouldn't have the same kind of destruction that you had during that earthquake because they're ready for it. But you okay. live and you learn. You know? well, what, what, we're ready here in, in, in California for earthquakes. So how many buildings in New York, even the skyscrapers, are built to that standard? Not very many. Maybe I'd, the newer I'd, buildings. I'd, I'd, I would be willing to say that probably there isn't a building on this island that is built on a rolling foundation. Okay, even though good. What happens e if an earthquake even happens? Though, wait a minute, as stupid e as Texas? Even though there is a, a, a fault running right through Central Park. That's right. Mm. Wow. Yeah. But, but, but what I'm saying, though, is this, if you're not prepared in New York, Mm -hmm. For an earthquake that may never happen, this is kind of like Texas. They weren't prepared for this because it doesn't happen. Yeah, but happen. you know, you know something. I got to tell you, they've had other problems. I mean, remember the remember the floods in Houston? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you and, know yeah, that I, was a freak too. Yeah. But these freaks, yeah. these freaks yeah. seem to be happening a lot to Texas. Yeah, man, and Texas is well, okay. A regular yeah. thing now. Yeah. To have more, more. Charlie, on. get out. <laughs> yes, maybe yeah. it's time to go back to Arizona. Oh no, wait a minute! They I'm got Chicago. You, yeah. Chicago. Yeah, back to Chicago. Yeah. Uh, it's too <laughs> cold up there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah but they're used to it. <laughs> All I know is I lived in Houston for how many years, Scott? I don't know. About, um, about three, four, three, four, five years. I don't know. I can't remember how many now. I'm, about, I'm so out of it. I don't remember my whole life anymore. <laughs> uh, but uh, I don't remember us ever, ever having anything coming close to snow or even weather that was cold enough to have snow. Yeah. You know, this We've was... gone many years without 
it ever getting below freezing during the winter. Right. Right. Oh. So to go eight straight days without it ever getting above freezing was just ridiculous. Yeah. So I mean, I, I just you know, I'm 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 amazed at it. You know, it's hard to be prepared for every weather event everywhere yeah. in the world or in the country. Yeah. Here's you another know. thing that's come up today. Uh, I, I this one I don't get, and maybe Brian can chime in on this. And Alan seems to know something about this, and that's with the uh, with the vaccines. Have you heard the latest on the vaccines? There's there's news every day. Yeah. What are you talking about? Yeah. The news today is that in England they've come out with a report that says that the Pfizer and it is also believed the Moderna with one shot is 90% effective. So I read the Wall Street Journal and it said 80% after eight weeks. And it's it's it it was in is in Israel. They did a study with I don't remember how many, two, 3,000 people and gave them one shot, just, you know, tried to do the one shot route. And uh, they found that they're 80% protected after eight weeks or something like that with one shot of the Pfizer is what they said. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I read. Um, well, what they're coming out with now is they're saying in England that it, that, it, that after I don't know not, not even that much after something about six weeks it the 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 Pfizer is ninety percent effective and there are reports saying the Moderna is also ninety percent effective after about maybe four or five weeks five weeks maybe six weeks so, <coughs> so now the talk going around to just not give. Uh, the, the second dose immediately or as fast as we've been giving it so we can get more first doses into arms. I don't know. Do you feel comfortable with that? Yeah, I don't. We, we, we have one of our smartest people. We, he uh, talked at our, our all-hands uh, people leader meeting a couple days ago, and they still have a lot of stuff that they're learning. That's right. Uh, and and there's like New England Journal. They're, they're still arguing in amongst each other about second when you should have your second shots you know all that stuff with, with the the mrna is still so new mm -hmm. <clears throat> even though it's been 20 years 20 years they've had it but they've only used it on animals mm -hmm. it's the first time they use it on humans so um there's still so much to that they're learning from it but that's right yeah, so there's you know this the, the news next week will say that you need one and a half shots who the hell knows i mean it's <laughs> it's it's, it's yeah. uh you know, it's, it's actually the Israeli thing that was published today in England uh, made it to the Lancet, which is like the CDC in, in the UK. Yeah. And so they're they're highly recognized. And no, the said, Lancet, the Lancet isn't like the CDC. The Lancet is the uh, uh, the medical journal of. of OK, of like Great JAMA, Britain. the Journal of America. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. OK, yeah. sorry. I'm, yeah. OK, so anyhow, um, uh, but it made it into that. And they said it's not been peer reviewed, mean, meaning um, uh, people in the field have not looked at the, the uh, evidence. Just Israel put it out, and and uh, I mean, you know, they don't know statistically if it'll work. Like Brian said, we're we're in a learning phase, and it would be great if they can give one vaccine. It would last. What what Dr. Fauci said was he's concerned. That giving only one shot of 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 this medicine mm -hmm. may not be enough to protect against the the uh, variances or the, the you know uh, that, that are changing, mm -hmm. and or it may not protect for very long, maybe a couple months. Yeah. So, but they don't know. They're it's yeah. all. I'm sorry. Yeah, Brian, he, he he was really talking also about how the mRNA. You know, you have these 95 percent. You know that the, the um, chance of not getting it, but, but usually the vaccines are about 60 to 65% usually. And even the Johnson and Johnson is going to be low. It's going to be like a 66% effectiveness. Um, so, and it's only one shot. So hmm. well, 66%. no, 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 no controls, you know, so this, you know, normal environment. So, yeah, so the, the 66 is pretty good considering 
you know, on, a, on an average year, the uh, vaccine for the flu is about 40%. So, yeah. Yeah. And they say, but very effective against severe, uh, severe disease. Now, yep. the other thing, the other thing, thing, the other thing they were saying about the, uh, about both of the, the vaccines is that if you have the, at least one in you, and then let's say you come down with COVID, that you will not get a deadly case of COVID. Mm-hmm. That it will I mitigate. Think looking into that, it will mitigate that. So my question is, that. we didn't know very much about these uh, these vaccines when we put them out to the general public, do we? Well, oh, not not when you use emergency use only. Yeah, right. emergency yeah. use only is the rush rush stuff. When you're doing normal, I mean, especially with the vaccines, years to try to get everything going. But yeah, they're they're, they're rushing out with the best. In the best information possible. Like I'm, right. I'm wearing a hat right now because a foot has started growing out of my head. So I don't know <laughs> if that had something to do with the. Uh, Does it have toe jam? I, yeah, a little bit, a little <laughs> bit. And what, by the way, uh, tomorrow will be one week to my uh, my next uh, shot. So, you know. Me too. Can't get mine to my next shot. What? Today is one week till my next shot. Really. Yeah, yes. so I'm getting ahead of you. So there. Well, of course, everybody's ahead of me. Haven't you heard the story? <laughs> Haven't you heard about my constant yes, griping? I yes, know. Yeah, Robert. Not... Robert, have you heard about this? I'm, I'm not ahead of you. <laughs> You're not. I ahead. haven't gotten my first yet. Why can't you get your first? God damn it! You got to pay attention. New Jersey doesn't have vaccines. It doesn't have supply. In my county, hmm. we're being given. 500 doses a week for a county a week that has 50,000. Oh, geez. Oh, wow. In a sense. Wow. I can't get a first shot yet. Yeah. Anaheim, they start, uh, Southern California, they start closing all those big facilities that they opened because they're not getting there. They had a Moderna shipment that was supposed to be there Tuesday. And like Thursday, they were complaining that it hadn't shown up yet. Northern California is doing really good, though. I understand problems in California, problems in Texas, as an example for a second shot. You've had a shot already, right, Charlie? I had the first one. I was supposed to have the second one tomorrow, but it's all shut down here. See? You got to ski there. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, what's happened is is that a lot of the country has shut down and isn't getting the uh, the uh, shots out, the vaccine out, because of the, of the weather. The refrigerators don't work. They have to be real cold, right? So, no, now the, yeah. you know the newest thing? They don't have to yeah. be cold. Oh, I oh. never heard that. It, it's it's Pfizer's, Pfizer's negative 30 deep freeze, and then the Moderna is negative 20. Oh, wait 25. a minute, but they said today now that, well, the, that, the, that the Pfizer <laughs> could be stored under normal refrigeration. Wow. I mean, they don't know that for sure. It's just, you know, news. Yeah. They're looking at it. Well, I mean, if that's true, then a lot of people went out and bought these big freezers for nothing. Uh, yes, and I'm trying to get freezers for my new factories, and they're pushing out the dates. Thermo Fisher keeps pushing out the dates, and I need these for my manufacturing lines. Wow. I own stock in them. I'll call them for you, Brian. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you can't. You you. So you haven't, Robert. You haven't even been able to make an appointment. That's right. Boy. I see. Yeah, Robert, a friend of the show, he lives over there, too, near you. And, yeah, he says that he can't, and he's at a special area that one of the, for living and, and these programs and seeing people with smokers going in there before him, and he has emphysema issues without from never smoking, you know, and just yeah. locked out. Now, you know, a couple, a couple weeks ago in the news, they talked about three states that are not getting vaccinated vaccines i brought this up in the show robert was on the show and new jersey is one of the worst mm-hmm. or i don't know what reason but it just neither wow you know? well i mean here in here in new york i mean they, they keep saying oh we're opening up all these new facilities and we're you know we're just opened up a big giant facility here and a big giant facility there and i'm going mm-hmm. wait a minute and then you're telling me you don't have enough Yep. Why are you opening up new facilities? Makes no sense. Make the mayor look good. M- make the governor look good. Governor he, he's o- good. he'd open up he'd open up McDonald's for vaccinations if he could <laughs> just to look good. You know, <laughs> uh, it's just amazing. And your governor over in uh, in uh, 
New Jersey. Is he kind of a douchebag or what? No, actually, he's a pretty cool guy, and he's he's actually proactive and so forth. You can't blame, I mean, I don't see where you can blame the governor for the fact that they're just not getting adequate number of doses. I really don't. Well, no, the, 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 the big about your state health department? The state health department does yeah. a fabulous job because we okay. had you know, we've had other crises and so forth that we went through, like the rest of the country. We were forerunners and so forth. So, you know, I, I don't think it's a governmental issue. I think way back when the vaccines came out, there was no fucking plan. Yeah. Think back to when you were a kid and they gave the Sabin, you know, piece yeah. of sugar and shit. Yeah. You, I showed up that. At your, you showed up at your local school you gave them your name. They handed you a piece of sugar and you went home. It was all worked out. Yes. Today, absolutely. it's a clusterfuck. Nobody planned anything. You yep, know, it, that's right. It's catch as catch can. Well, so. part of the problem was that a certain person who shall go nameless didn't order enough of the stuff. When he was offered about uh, 100 million more doses, he, yeah. didn't, he didn't order them. Yeah. So... That's that's part of the problem. Now Pfizer, Moderna have to play catch up, and and how fast they can play catch up, you know, they can only throw, you know, send you know send those things out there as fast as they possibly can. Oh, I don't and know. And they're not many... just supplying us, by the way. They're supplying the rest of the world too. Yeah. Right. So the, so I don't know how many people have ever heard of Kaiser. It's a large HMO here in California. Uh, yeah, I've heard of it. Uh, uh, as, oh. as 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 um, uh, Bubbles used to refer to it, it's also referred to as doctor assisted suicide. Yeah, you know, uh, good people, good medicine, good luck. But um, <laughs> <laughs> Kaiser's so very good now. The, it is very good. I have it, and so they're they're complaining. That they, you know, they have the money and the assets to go buy it directly from Pfizer or Moderna or whoever. But you can't do but, it. But the government won't allow it. In fact, and our gov our kidding. governor, our governor, got a hold of Pfizer, which is a New York State uh, run or, a company, right. uh, and and said we'd like to buy some from you, and they said can't do it. We, nope. you know, the government won't let us sell it to nope. individuals. But should it really come to that where governors have to make side deals with companies and you know all no. that does all no, that does just... is it leads to further inequities, you know? Yep. In, in same thing they were doing with the PPE, they're doing the same thing. Yep. They started doing that shit with the masks. Did you see? Yeah. Did you that was see... old Trumpy working it working his work. Did yeah. you see the, these two women Dressed in full PPE gear, you know, the masks and everything, uh, trying to get their shot in California. Yeah. And it oh. turned out they were like 18, but they yeah. were trying to pass they, they, themselves they, off as 65. Well, I thought yeah. that was in Florida. Was it Florida? Uh, okay. I think so. Yeah, Florida. there was one was 45 was and one was yeah. 34. Or something. Yeah, or something yeah. like that. But it was it yeah. was just But they were there for their second shot, so apparently it worked the first time. Really? Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you need to dress up like a little old lady, Robert. I'm, I'm 70. Gonna... How much older can I be? How are these people getting their shots and I'm still waiting for my second one? Okay. Alex, I don't want to hear it. Mm. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. I'm going to gripe about this until I get my second shot. Good. It's a conspiracy Good. directed directly at you, Alex. It is. No, yeah. no, it's just, you know, it's just. Well, you, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Alex has got his first shot. Robert's got nothing. Yeah, Robert's got nothing. I feel sorry for Robert. Yeah. Uh, so Robert, come get my second shot, okay? Okay, thanks, Alex. That was mighty guilty. big. I'll give you my papers and everything, because the second shot's just like the first shot. You know. Thanks. So I, I have to be an 81-year-old former radio star of the Jewish faith. Yeah. Well, okay. you look Jewish enough. Can, you live in yeah, New Jersey. That. Jeff, you had something you were going to say there? Jeff? Well, I think, Robert, why don't you move to Connecticut? At, you know what? I've I've considered it on a couple of occasions. I love certain areas in Connecticut. Well, I, it's a good. Apparently, it's one of the best places to get injected. There you go. Really? Yeah. Really? Well, so how come you had to, how come you had to go to Yale? It wasn't. Well, yeah, because that's the best 
place to go. Oh, I see. Okay. But in you, Connecticut, but there's other good places. Too, but you but, were supposed to get it somewhere else in Connecticut. and Yes. Yeah. It was like right down the street. Yeah. Alex. And, and the reason it was canceled is because of the snow. Right. But okay. and, and that's what's happened to other people. Yeah, too. sure. That, that's but, not the big problem. But I had my smart wife signed up two places. Yeah. And the first one canceled me because of the snow. And the other one didn't. And the other one was like uh, three days later. Jeff, yeah. I've signed up in so many places. I think at some point I may be drafted because <laughs> I started to lose track of <laughs> where I was putting my name and address. You have a book. <laughs> yeah, at at some point, you know, they they're gonna they're gonna draft me into the well, navy. Now, or now, now, Kevin, you haven't gotten yours yet, or have you gotten yours? <laughs> no, not yet. I'm not on yet. a list. That you're oh. on a list, but you're not set for a date yet, or no? Because uh, it, we get about uh, two or three hundred shots at a time God. in our county oh, of sixty thousand. In, in your county, huh? It's it's county run, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you can't you can't come up to Levi Stadium, huh? Uh, no, I've heard that there's places I can go. I can, can go out of County now. So good. Levi stayed. I, it was on I Friday when we got the letter. To go there, my mother-in-law, but she, tonight we found a spot at Kaiser. So we're going to take her to Kaiser because Levi's, wow. I guess you got to walk a ways to get there. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was a drive through but actually you park and then you actually have to go into the, the luxury yeah. area. And I don't know, were they offering wheelchair or anything there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were, they were. Oh, they, they were. They, okay, they had wheelchairs good. right there at the front. Uh, I thought they would. But and and Josh doesn't. I'm holding even, her appointment jo there. In case Josh doesn't through. even give a crap about any of this because he's too young to get the shot, right, Josh? I don't know what the rules are for it. I, I have. I don't know anything about the vaccine. Really? Do you care? No. no. Really, you aren't afraid of getting the COVID? Not really. Josh has this attitude. If I get it, I get it. You know. I mean, I'm, I don't want to get it, but I I just cannot talk about the vaccine nonstop like some people can. I just, yeah, yeah. I don't care. You got to make an appointment and go to a play at a I, I can't. I Plus, can't. they're not even offering it to anybody that, you know, in that age group yet anyway. So why yeah. worry about it? Yeah. Exactly. I, mean, I, have no I got to get my it. mom to, you know, I had to deal with my mom and my mother-in-law and all that. I'm worried about them. Yeah. Then, I'm, then I'll get mine shit done. You know, that's, yeah. it, it's a pain in the ass, but. Alan. You get get Kevin, but, wait, hold on a second. Alan had his hand up. Alan. I'm sorry. Yeah, go Kevin, ahead. Kaiser is inoculating people here in the Bay Area from anywhere in California that is a caretaker at any age. You, uh, uh, and your mother, you could you could claim you're a caretaker of your mother or, or your, your grandmother or whoever you said is going to go there to Kaiser and get an appointment. Mm -hmm. And you guys can both get inoculated at the same time. It's happening. I'm not taking area. care of her. I'm taking care of my mom, who's not Kaiser. Right. I understand she got the first one, but you, you're you a caretaker. <laughs> Kaiser is inoculating people that are not Kaiser members. Yeah, I think you. I think most of these places that are inoculating yeah. are, have to take anybody who can sign it's up there. It's federal law. Also, there's another thing now where the federal government <laughs> is now assigning a right. certain amount yeah. of, of uh, vaccine, vaccines to, and you might check this out, Robert, uh, to pharmacies. Uh, and it's independent yeah. of the state's supply. Good yeah. luck. Not yet. Oh, really? You tried that already? Oh, please. Uh, oh, okay. Well, it's Rite Aid. Walgreens. No. And yeah. they all say the same thing. We, have, we haven't got any. Really? And yet yeah, the government is supposed to be supplying them. We check those sites once a half hour. Wow. Wow. Oh, please. So, so you're on this constantly, right? Between my wife and I, yeah, because I have factors that make me somewhat at risk. And so it, it's important to me that I at least get this process started. Yeah. But there's not well, much age, I can do age alone. Age alone, Robert. Yeah, age no, I understand good. that. Right. Yeah. 
They they were given shots. I'll give you another story about New Jersey. They were given shots at MetLife Stadium. Mm-hmm. That's one of the super sites in New Jersey. Right. And some right. people we know went and had to stand online out in the freezing cold for four mm-hmm. hours. Wow. And I wow. can't even get an appointment for that indignity. I'm going to go over tomorrow and take a look and see what the line's like at our place because I'm going to get it in a week and I want to see if there's a line or whether they, they've gotten that problem taken <laughs> care of. Because the, the reason I had to wait in a the line, they claimed, was because they had gotten going late that day. So there was a line for that reason. But I think knows. you ought to take Alex up and take his shot, Robert. Yeah. There you go. Shot. Yeah. Um, and what, I, what if I'm late for mine or I don't show up for mine because of one reason or another? Don't give it to somebody else. No, I think they yeah. have, they have, they'll hold on to it for a week or something for you here in New York. Yeah. I, really? Yeah. Really? Yeah, you have wow. a window that you can, I don't know where you would find out how you can get on that window, but. Whatever. Anyway, other other news, uh, and I think this is important news, and I think maybe it's something I want to throw out to this uh, politically astute panel. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, Kim Kardashian filed for divorce from Kanye West today. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Oh, God. So, so she won't be first lady? No. Yeah. <laughs> or the second or the third. I see. Uh-huh. Um, no. It, doesn't she isn't she trying to get a law degree or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, well, it's kind of a it's kind of a weird law degree where if you work as kind of a uh, uh, in an office uh, working on cases with like the paralegal paralegal, you can um, get some paralegal. kind of status which gets you towards being a lawyer. I don't I I don't know the, the celebrity fact. status <laughs> celebrity status. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but she uh, she's uh, divorcing her husband of uh, what is it, four mm. years I think it is they're married. They have, Isn't this like her second or third marriage? This is I think this is her third marriage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She um, and she's not even a cop. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, Almighty! But anyway, so that's the big news today. I thought you would. Maybe I'd throw that out to the panel. Yeah. It's very controversial. Even bigger than what? <laughs> Even bigger yeah. than what? Who? Yeah. Uh, yeah. This They're is... a couple days behind the news in Texas. They're talking about Rush now. Yeah. Well, wasn't yeah. that today? Yeah, Rush uh, died uh, today in Texas. Yeah, he, died, he died tomorrow. Yeah. I didn't find out about it until today. Well, you should have, oh. you should have known in Texas that it was a... Uh, uh, the, that he ago. died because uh, they all the flags in Texas were at half mast, weren't they? Right, they were. They were everyone well, was I haven't been to see any flags. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, as I said the other night, I, I, uh, you know, I have a professional opinion of of Rush, which is very positive, and I have a political opinion of Rush, which is very political. You know, and the two are different. The two are different. You know, um, as a as a professional, uh, I look at him and I go, he really was good at what he did. He was so good, in fact, that he set the zeitgeist for the times. I mean, in a lot of ways. And and uh, um, I think you have to give him a certain amount of credit for being able to do that. I think more people took him seriously than he took himself. Okay, so. Goebbels was good at propaganda too. Right? But no, no, Goebbels is a different story. Okay, yeah, yeah I know it's a different thing. Yeah. I don't know the Goebbels history. didn't have a radio show. Yeah, <laughs> he used to keep me awake when I was driving at night. Who Goebbels? No, oh Limbaugh, I, Limbaugh, Goebbels. Yeah, yeah, and and tell me, Kev, come on, how entertaining was he? Oh, he was entertaining enough to you know have me yelling in my truck when I was if, driving down the road. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, because they'd repeat them at night, and, you know, I'd be doing a turn down to Kettleman City or something and yeah. in the fog, and he'd start blasting off his shit, and I'd be yelling at myself in the truck, and, you That's stupid idiot, loaded. what the hell are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. Uh, then you hear the other guys on the CB going, God damn that Rush Limbaugh, he's, he's a genius, that son of a bitch. Yeah. Isn't, it, isn't it amazing how we yell? At the TV set. Uh, I'll give you a good example. Marjorie, every time Donald Trump was talking on TV, 
she would go, she would yell at the screen, shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, that's about right. And I keep trying, kept trying to tell her he can't hear her. Yeah, it didn't it, work. It doesn't work. No, it you just know, makes you feel better. And, and proof of that was the next day he didn't shut the fuck up. Okay. No. <laughs> so, but uh, it, I, I'm just amazed that she, you know, that, that <clears throat> kind of like affected her, you know. Yeah, hey, but you feel you like you have sheep? input. Huh? How do you feel you like milk you have sheep? Input? Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I didn't get to hear Robert said what? How do you milk a sheep? How do you milk a sheep? Yeah, you tell them the election was rigged and you hit them up for a donation. <laughs> I got it. Very that, 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 that's got sort it. of like that's sort of like where did they get virgin wool from? Ugly sheep. No. <laughs> I never heard that one. No. The, the virgin wool? Yeah, never heard that one. Never heard that one. Yeah, sorry. Um, no, but, uh, you know, my question is that uh, once uh, COVID gets cured, you know, we don't have it anymore. Uh, what are we going to talk about? You know, we, we haven't got Trump to talk about anymore. I well, can't. He'll be back in the news. By that time, he'll be up for re-election. I mean, it... it, 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 it how, what kind of job do you think Biden's doing? He's he's been yeah. on the job about that thirty-eight the minutes. I've been listening to. Okay, but you know this is a country in which we judge people on thirty-eight minutes. I I try my best not to, right? Because I think, he, I think I think I think he that. I think he hit the ground running, and that's the yep. most he could possibly do at this point. And yeah, and yeah. he's delightfully boring. He was, it, it, yes, he was bragging. Yeah. Yeah. He was dragging a weight behind him when he hit the, the ground running because of the idiot that, that was in the White House before wouldn't give him information that he needed. Oh yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So yeah. considering all that considered, I have to give him a great deal of props yeah. for having taken care of everything. Okay, <clears throat> I know? guess the big and question I is. Think, <clears throat> I think the hundred the hundred million in arm you know vaccinations. Mm-hmm. In the first hundred days, you know, he put some really good goals there. So, yeah, he yeah. really paid attention to what he said would be the number one thing. Is Except not in New Jersey, obviously. The, uh, the, the, um, the stimulus coronavirus stimuli, stimulus bill or whatever you want to call it that they're trying to get passed has got like like 65 percent approval rating in the country. But the, all 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 the Republicans are going to vote against it. So yeah, you know, but I, they they've got to push it through with that reconciliation, which is bullshit. They they should just get rid of the fucking fil- filibuster and do everything in the Senate. I don't know why. Who filibuster. caved on the filibuster? There was another what? Democratic cave. Who caved on the filibuster? Um, I don't remember yeah. the person's name, but uh, Manch- Manchin Mansion or whatever. Oh, we got Manchin. Duke, yeah, Mansion and then him up in Arizona. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it was, uh, it's, um, it's, it's pretty, um, um, it, it's going to be interesting to see what he can get done and can't get done. Yeah. Uh, there, there, uh, there is, um, there's, a somebody that's up for nomination now. It's up for approval and it doesn't look like she's going to get it because one Democrat, right. huh? Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. West Virginia. Yeah. Man, the tier, what, Joe Manchin. Tier a yeah. Or something? yeah. It's Joe Manchin. Yeah. Doesn't like her. Who, uh, who, who is she? I, do you know? Do you know who I'm talking about? Yeah. The the what's, yeah. Her, what's her name? She was in the Obama Neera administration. Tandon. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. What's her name? Neera. Neera N E E R A Tandon. T-A-N-D-N. Okay. Neera Tandon. Yeah. And, and she, yeah. She mm-hmm. was uh, she was in the Obama administration. I don't know what she did, oh, but I, she's always on MS. She used to always be on MS uh, and uh, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, fucking tearing up all the the stupid Trumpers. So that's why they don't want her. The Republicans yeah. are against her. So what's Manchin? Well, she's got what, a weird old name too, so they don't like that down there either. Well, what what has Manchin true. got against her? And, and I guess uh, they're looking for a Republican now to vote he was, for her. He, mean to a republican <laughs> she she was mean to a republican yeah, me, yeah me. that's mm. why he won't yeah. be, he's a go you know well, we yeah well, this, we this senator is like barely a barely a democrat anyway yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. uh jeff had his hand up what jeff yeah i was gonna say as far as biden i think he did a great job 
from what I've heard about all the people that he hired. Yeah, I, I yeah. agree. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm not an expert to, to make that decision myself, but I've heard that from a lot of sources. I, I, I think that's good information, Jeff. Yeah. yeah. Not appointing yeah. any nephews or qualified people. people and not ass kissing cronies. Yeah, yeah, there's good people around. Well, no they didn't boss. call me up. I think, He's... Steve, that that the good thing about him is uh, Biden seems like the kind of guy that if you're working for him and you disagree with him, he doesn't mind people disagreeing with him. That he probably feels that's fine, you know. That makes me honest. It makes me think twice about everything I'm doing. I mean, do you anyway, want to do you want a yes pe man for everything you do? You want people it, with uh, different opinions. And, and we got to, we got to admit that the people in uh, uh, in 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 Trump's uh, cadre uh, were like felt like they were walking on glass. You know, yeah. they couldn't they they they, they just yeah. were, were afraid to say anything that mm -hmm. didn't kowtow to what he believed and wanted to believe what kind of an atmosphere is that that's not a very creative atmosphere nothing gets done in an atmosphere like that so you know what have you all right i just got a text from a friend of mine that lives in perth amboy new jersey mm -hmm. <clears throat> they i don't know how close you are to that robert but they are oh. inoculating people 65 and older and they have extra vaccines and I don't know what that means. I was just on their site today. Yeah. Okay. They have extra right now. Head down quick. Yeah, right. Yeah, I don't know. But, Where's okay. How far is Perth Amboy from you? An hour. An hour? I, I would go, but we were on that site this afternoon. Okay. But, then how come your friend says you can get him down there, and he went to the site today and couldn't get an appointment? I don't know. I don't know. You know, it's a mess. So who knows? I don't know. He just... He got an appointment today. He's a little over 65. He got an appointment for early next week in Perth Amboy. Hmm. Hmm. So I don't, like I said, I didn't know how far you were. And I mean, the only thing I know about Perth Amboy is it's not a great neighborhood. Other than that, I don't know much about it. Yeah. And maybe, maybe I'm mistaken. That's where the Amboy well, Dukes came from? I think that there's, yeah. a, I, a, yes. I, I've got a major, pro I, I, I've had a major problem all along with the fact that I feel there should be some kind of pecking order. Uh, in that, uh, if you're 65, why should you be getting it before a guy who's 75 or a person who's 75? Get what I'm saying? In other words, we should yeah. exhaust all of one group before we get to the next one. And yeah, then, but, you know, but I'm, Alex, that's tough to pull off. You're, right. you're, you're suggesting that there's this national database which exists for all mankind to look at, to say, okay, 70s and up, form a line here. Mm -hmm. They don't have that information, and that information is scattered in different places. Mm -hmm. right? hmm. And so but, it's not as easy as it sounds. Logically, that makes a great deal of sense. Yeah. But I ran databases for a living in the school yeah, but, district, but, and it's yeah. a difficult thing to pull but off. But I don't know if this has to do with databases as much as it has to do with, say, show we, can we call a pecking order? You know, let's face it, somebody who's 75 or somebody who's 80 has a better chance of dying from this thing than a guy who's 75. Not necessarily. M more so than a guy who's 70 or the guy Not who's 65. In, you know? in most cases. But then, there, but then there are mitigating factors. The guy that's 75 might be, you know, diabetic to the point oh, where he gets insulin. And, you know, the 75-year-old might be mm -hmm. have, have COPD. Oh, yeah. The right. eighty-year-old might be as healthy as you are, for crying out loud. So, oh no! Then, no. then there are healthcare workers that come into See, it. See now, uh, the, here, here, kind of here was the worker. part that got me. Healthcare workers, absolutely first in line. They should be there getting the shots because they're the ones become most exposed to this, and uh, they need the shots first of all. But now we say, should we be giving them to teachers? Well, what? Here, what? Here go. But here we go. Then yeah. you have to sit there and define what's a healthcare worker. Is a woman who's a receptionist at my doctor's office a healthcare worker? You know, yeah. like everything like that has to be defined. It's oh, well, they're, they're defining the latest thing is comorbidities. 
Now, they're, they're allowing people with comorbidities to get the shots as well and have them available to them. And what's a comorbidity? Uh, smoking. Obesity. Obesity. Like uh, Asthma. So you're saying disease. I should feel guilty because I got my shot? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm, 50, I'm 51, but I'm a teacher, so the fact that I hate kids. the fact that I hate the fuck out of you so, shouldn't so, let it shouldn't so, shouldn't get you down. So Robert, Robert, you, are you still in in contact with the school district or anything? Because no, this friend of mine is a retired school teacher in Perth Amboy, and the school district he reached out to them because there are starting to inoculate teachers mm -hmm. i've oh. been retired for 13 years okay uh, okay so uh, 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 sorry uh, trying to help no, that's fine D D brian's got his hand up. brian yeah they they the school district just sent us an email today saying that they're bumping them up on the 28th february yeah. 28th teachers will start getting uh the shots they should yeah. have been getting them all oh. along i mean oh. you know the the kids come to class Kids are not as liable to come down with something as right. the as the teachers are, but the kids come to class with cooties. Those cooties right. are blowing their way all and, during, the, the, you know. And, and yeah. getting those little brats to cover up their noses is a pain in the ass, I'll okay. tell you from firsthand experience. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, Jeff. I have one suggestion for Robert, and because my daughter is doing it, you can go and volunteer and get a, a shot early. oh you're, you're talking about volunteering to take people to the no to be at the at this wherever the facilities are to do you introduce people and no check, thing. No check thing. through the checklist what's your name What's your address? What? Yes, thank you, but no. How old are you? Show me your driver's he license. He shouldn't have to do no, that. No, thanks. The man I is over it, sixty. No, he's yeah. a, he's over sixty-five. He's I, got I, he's got. COVID. I'm not trying to give him say that he's not justified, but I'm saying there's another way to get in. Yeah, no, I'll 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 wait. Thank you. I appreciate your help, but I, that's not something I want to do. Yeah, okay. but you know the fact is that he is. How old are you now, Robert? 70. 70 mm -hmm. he, he, you have some comorbidities some some problems yes. that are mitigating yes uh you should be in the front of that line sure you, know? you should be you, in, in fact Jersey you probably you probably should be there ahead of me to be honest with you you know is new york inoculating people from out of state uh is, is new york inoculating people from out of state um I do not know that. Mm. You know, I really don't know that. I don't. I don't know either. I know that uh, they said that they have they have a place in the Bronx. They have uh, they use in Yankee Stadium, and they told people that you can go there, but you have to live in the Bronx, and you have to at least for the first week or two weeks or something like that in order to get a shot at this facility in the Bronx because the Bronx has had a higher incidence of uh, COVID and COVID-related deaths and everything else than any other borough in New York City. So they're allowing people to go there, and they're, and also it's areas where they have the least compliance with getting vaccinations, so they want to make it easy for them. So for a week, or maybe two weeks, they're allowing people to go there to get them uh, without having, if say, being coming from Manhattan to go get them. All right. So they are doing something like that in a few places where they're, you know, you have to live in the area or whatever. But I think you could come over from New Jersey and probably get a shot here. Yeah. I'm probably less bothered by this than you might think, because I'm not going anywhere anyway. Yeah, I haven't since March and I haven't even seen relatives you know, it's my wife and I and we don't go out. And but, get... but wouldn't you like to? Um, well, because I don't know about you, but I'm getting a little more than me, but I'm, I, it, it isn't bothering me as much as it I'm is. getting a little squirrely. I'll tell you that right now. How about you, Jeff? No, a lot, a lot, <laughs> a lot. Yeah. And I'm telling you. Yeah. And, and, just, and when you have, it come, you know, it comes every day, several times. Yeah. Day. And once you get the yeah. second shot, I think you feel a little more confident going out. 
Anxiety. You know, you know, e even though you'll wear a mask and everything else, you'll take all the precautions. You just will feel a certain yeah. Yeah. safer. John Larkin, you got your hand up. I go outside, but I don't like it. It's fucking depressing. Everything's closed and it's, you know, it's, it's fucking depressing. I don't want to go outside. You know, I mean, if you buy something to get something to eat, you know, you got to sit on the fucking corner. Mm -hmm. You know, it sucks. About three days ago, I think I went to the store and then I came right back. That's the most I've been out in weeks. Yeah. Uh, Trucker Steve. Yeah, Steve. Yeah. Me and my wife, we went to the mall today. Okay. Mm -hmm. While uh, Rocky was getting his uh, haircut and we went into the food court by some lunch. They opened the malls after lockdown, but they didn't open the food court to sit down. Yeah. So we go in the mall to get our food, and then we have to walk back to the fucking car to eat our food. Yeah. <laughs> break break time. The fucking malls open. So, yeah, we we have we have about eight hundred people at our two buildings for manufacturing, mm -hmm. and all the break rooms are closed. You can go in there and get coffee, but you can't have your food in there, and you have to take breaks in your car. But it makes really? no sense. You got a whole bunch of people walking through the mall, but you can't sit down and eat. Well, you know, Brian, your your because you put your mask down Be because you put your mask down. That's why your facility, Brian, is close to mine. Are there any pretty twenty five year old women? They could come take a break over at my house. <laughs> <laughs> well. Yeah. Isn't that a little ambitious? Uh, okay, well, I don't know. I just, you know, I just thought I'd ask. Honestly, there are a lot of 50 year olds. Like 20, 25, <laughs> eh? Yeah, well, okay, you know. Um, yeah. He needs his place cleaned or something. So, uh, so here, here, here's what we normally would say uh, on, a, on, a, on a Friday show. So, what are you all doing this weekend? Mm -hmm. Oh, we're, we're going to San Francisco tomorrow. Are you really? Yeah, just to get out of the house and yeah, just oh go yeah, there, because you got cars drive. there. Yeah, I don't have a car, yeah. so I can't I can't even do that. How, and, yeah. and Robert, but, you're uh, staying in the house, right? Yeah, I'll probably watch hockey. Yeah, I'm I'm planning on getting up Rage and going to the head. and going to the living room. That's the, my big plan mm -hmm. for tomorrow. Robert, you're a Rangers fan. I noticed. Yes, and for sixty years, Steve. And, and Char wow. Charlie's going to go out and shovel snow, right, Charlie? Uh, yep. Does that any left. <laughs> if there's any left. I'm a Penguins fan. I had an uncle who used to work in the front office there. Oh, really? So I see from your hat, jerseys, and all like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, let's, you know, I just want to wish you all a... Uh, what's that? Go Sharks. Oh, go Sharks? Oh. oh, okay. Are they playing in San Francisco now, or are they stuck in Arizona? You know what the difference is? No, they finally got to come home. Uh, what? I don't know, but I wouldn't want to get butt fucked by either one of them. Thank you very much. With that uh, little piece I guess of... I missed that, but then yeah, I missed it. I missed it too. Would you like to repeat yeah, it one more like... time, John? I didn't hear it either. You know what the difference between Elton John and a shark is? Oh, don't, 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 don't go there. <laughs> I don't know, oh. but I wouldn't want to get butt fucked by either one of them. Ah. Uh, thank you so much, Robert Natali, for joining us tonight. Uh, I'm sure you'll have a lot in the minutes to report back next right, time we see you. Playing in uh, Lake Tahoe this weekend too. Yeah, Trucker mm. Steve, thank you, thank you, Dan Meyer, thank you, Alan. Always a pleasure. Uh, Charlie uh, wouldn't be here. Wouldn't be a show without you. Uh, that, we missed you when you we, were gone. We had a couple of shows without him. What are you talking yeah. about? Josh, uh, a little, yeah. qui little quiet tonight, but <laughs> nice to see your face here, Kevin. Always good having you here, Kev, uh, 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 excuse me, um, and Brian, thank you so much for being here. Uh, Jeff Stein, thank you, and a thanks to John Lark and all of you. Give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go. That's the citizen panel, folks. That's uh, what, they, uh, what they wrote. Um, we got a new citizen panel uh, merging any minute now with uh, Jack Bishop and the intersection. And you'll be using Skype for that. And the address is GabNet Live, J-B-N-E-T-L-I-V-E. -E. We'll see you again. Let's see, Monday we do a little pop-up show at 4 o'clock, but we'll see you right back here, 10.30 Eastern Standard Time here in New York City uh, for another little episode of The Ramble. In the meantime, as always, 
If you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, wear a mask, okay? And be careful out there. It's really important. And get vaccinated if you can. Good night, everybody.